<laughs> so, now, how do you resolve this? Because the British are the most powerful nation the world had ever seen, politically, culturally, economically. So you gotta appease them somehow. So you said, all right, give us back the planet name, and we'll allow, allow you to name the moons after fictional characters in the writings of your most famous author. So that's how that came out. And so the moons of Uranus are Miranda, Puck, Oberon, Portia, these sorts of things. If you're completely illiterate, those are characters in, in case you didn't know. Okay, that was like a whole diversion there, but I didn't get that off my chest. So, now where did I leave off? Check and see if you're paying attention. What a planet is. Criteria. Well, criteria. Right, oh, the check boxes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Somebody was paying it over the left hand side here. <laughs> so, check. Is it round? Yes. Are you the principal orbiter? Yes. Third one. Have you cleared your orbit <laughs> of debris? <laughs> and yeah. Not Pluto. <laughs> it is orbiting the sun with countless other frozen bodies in the outer solar system. And that's yeah. not a planet either. It is not even the largest of them. In the last 10 years, we found two, well, one that sort of rivals it in size, another one is definitely bigger than it. Eris, it's called. There's Sedna and Eris, challenging Pluto for the status of the biggest ice ball in the universe. <laughs> Uh, by the way, so if you if you don't satisfy these three criteria, any one of them is not satisfied. Sorry, if all three have to be satisfied in order to be a planet. If you're around a principal object and haven't cleared your orbit, then you're a dwarf planet. So two out of three checks gets you the dwarf status. All right, that elevated one of the asteroids. The biggest asteroid is called Ceres. C E R E S. It's round. But where is it found? The asteroid belt. Um. Littered with debris. Yeah. Yeah. So that was not a planet, it's a dwarf planet. Then they said, oh, we've got to make Pluto a little happier than this. So why don't we make a new a new sub classification? If you are round, haven't cleared your orbit, but you're icy and orbit beyond Neptune. <laughs> then you're a toy. <laughs> Pluto is then the benchmark of this new class of icy body in the outer solar system. And Ceres would not be a Plutoid. Ceres is once again a Roman god, uh, namely a oh, goddess, goddess of harvest. And Ceres is the root word to the word cereal. How we, now, how did, a, how, did, how did an asteroid get the name of a Roman god? Because when it was first discovered, it was thought to be a planet orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. Big news, discovered a new planet. Then they kept looking and they found another planet. And then another, and then another. They found four in a row. Named them all, Mercury, Sirius, Pallas, Vesta, Juno. Then they kept and said, wait a minute, pause, these are kind of little. And holy cow, there's like dozens of them. There's hundreds of them. There's thousands of them. So they said, maybe we've discovered a new swath of real estate in the solar system, rather than just some planet hangout. And so, if you look at textbooks from 1801 up through 1850, the planet count went up, got as high as 17, 18, 19. You didn't know that. Get, get a book in 1845, there are 17 planets in the solar system. Then the numbers got out of hand. They said, we've discovered something new. They're not planets, they're something else. Thus became the asteroid belt. So we've kind of been down this road before. We kind of, we kind of, this, so Pluto was just simply the first object discovered of a new swath of real estate in the outer solar system, the Kuiper Belt. And that's where it now stands. And that's where we, um, so what the Pluto Files is, oh by the way, I feel strongly, I, I don't care what the definition of the word planet is, I really don't. But if it's going to be everything is round, I submit to you that that's just not useful. If Pluto is in the same category as Jupiter, and I say, oh, I just discovered a planet, they didn't have to ask, well, is it big, is it, is it small, is it gaseous, is it rocky, does it have rings, is it in habitable zone? If we have to play 20 questions after I say, I just discovered a planet, the word planet is not useful to you. <laughs> I can tell you, oh, could you pull that book off the shelf? 
Could you pull that dictionary off the shelf? Could you pull that encyclopedia off the shelf? Could you pull that pamphlet off the shelf? Could you pull that paperback off the shelf? Each one of those words means something to you, and you will not pull one that's not that off the shelf when I ask it of you. I don't say, pull the paper product off the shelf. <laughs> so what we need is a lexicon that properly captures the depth of knowledge we now have acquired of these cosmic objects. Because the word planet was fine and all you knew was that they were just sort of wanderers against the background sky as they were defined in ancient Greece. Planet <clears throat> comes from the word planetes, wanderer. There were seven wanderers in the night sky, unambiguously defined. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, the Sun, and the Moon. Those objects would move throughout the year against the background sky. Nothing else moved. You got seven planets, bada bang. There it is. No arguments. Those then became the names for the seven days of the week drawn from Roman and Norse mythology. So Saturn would be Saturday, uh, the Sun is Sunday, the Moon is Monday, that sort of thing. So Copernicus comes along, puts the Sun in the middle instead of Earth. Earth then becomes an orbit around the Sun, commensurate with these other things we had been calling planets. The Moon comes into orbit the Earth. So we lost two planets and gained one. So after Copernicus, there were six planets and not seven. But a planet then was just, did you go around the sun? Okay, that was it. Wasn't much else to talk about. Wasn't much else interesting to say. Telescope hadn't been invented yet. This year, the 400th anniversary of the telescope. Benighted the, the International Year of Astronomy because of this. So, uh, all I can say is that now we've been to the planets. We've orbited them. We've we plunged probes into their gaseous envelopes. We've orbited their moons. We've had rovers on them. So much to talk about. And if all you can do is lead with the statement, is it a planet or not? I submit that that is no longer scientifically or pedagogically interesting. And so while I'm here pontificating to you, all my pontifications are reserved for only the last chapter of the Pluto Fox, <laughs> where it says advice to teachers, parents, and students. The rest of the book is just a celebration. A celebration of this love affair, irrational though it looked to me. Uh, and I'll give an example of this irrationality, and then we'll break for questions. Do you have a copy of the book here? Then may I use it? Thank you. Uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> for you people on the radio, I'm reaching for my book. <laughs> Hello, everyone on the radio. How are you? Uh, so, so, in the book, well, just so you know, I'm turning to page 111, and on 111, 111 is the very first letter sent by a seven-year-old kid. It's the very first letter. This is the one where he drew the picture of Pluto on the back page here. It's the cutest thing. Dear Natural History Museum, you are missing planet Pluto. Please make a model of it. This is what it looks like. It is a planet. Love, Will Gallant. A picture of Pluto by Will Gallant. I am seven years old. That's so cute, so cute. And the others from, there are, I have other letters here that are not as um, G rated. So um, that's what the sort of the at sign, the number sign, and the exclamation points are for. Communicating non G rated content. Uh, uh, I'll tell you two more things and we'll go to QA. Uh, one of my favorite comics, in, in my very favorite comic in here, because I put comics in here in humor pieces. My favorite comic is by Chaz Almond, where he's got a personified orb of Pluto on a street corner holding a beggar's cup. And there's a sign in front of him that says, Victim of Downsizing. Uh. <laughs> there's also, there's an article written for The Onion. You know The Onion. Yeah. We, we all know The Onion. We've got to love The Onion. Uh, there's an article there. Uh, they're, they're fake news articles, right? So this one said, NASA decides to send a consoler probe to Pluto. <laughs> and it's filled with all this sort of office politics speak, like office psychology speak. Well, uh, the, the probe is designed to arrive on a Friday rather than a Monday. <laughs> so it has the weekend to recover from this news. And lastly, lastly, Forgive me, but Appendix H is 